Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 892. It's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Today it's the return of the much loved feature called Do You Know Dad? Where we learn about dastardly things China is doing and just not so dastardly things. Plus, we hear from Shelly Schuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, Mike's Daily Podcast, John Deere the Engineer, and did you hear about Jared from Subway? Gee, oh man. Mike's Daily Podcast. Bad news for that sandwich company. So, a friend of mine had her heart blown into bits by a guy who is a total narcissist those people should be put on the no-fly list and be pummeled by the closest swinging fist they live to control and use you and me mike's daily podcast anyone who is diagnosed with this personality mike's should be given daily mandatory podcast therapy yeah but then the entire entertainment industry would be empty lots of narcissists in the world of entertainment radio television movies look who just walked in hello mike matthews it's jolly it's too hard to get your job here oh my god i can't believe that about jared yeah you know and he did not seem like a narcissistic one he seemed like a, a normal average type of guy i think that's why people liked him is that he seems so normal but it, now we're finding out all about this child pornography stuff and that his jared organization the executive guy that ran that he was charged i know my god he's it's really weird and like celebrities like bill cosby i know shelly bill cosby as well He's admitted to using quaaludes to get people, not himself using them, but getting other people to use them so that, well, you know. Like Matthews, I know. Ew, that's like so gross. Yeah, it's pretty disturbing, all of this. And look who else just walked in. Hi, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Yes, Mike. So you're saying people with narcissistic personalities should be locked up? Well, no, they just, they really need to get help. I've dealt with a lot of them. My friend... Had her heart broken by one of them. I just, she actually ended up, once she got her heart broke, she did a bunch of research on it. And yeah, it's a thing. Narcissists have the this like no empathy whatsoever for any other humans. The, it's, it's basically just them and that's it. They just think of themselves. They are only happy when they're causing other people to go, they love it when they make other people go crazy. When they cause other people pain for their amusement. This is a thing. You can look it up. Narcissists. Wasn't that that Greek guy who fell in love with his reflection in the lake? That's right, Floyd. That was based on Greek mythology. Mike Matthews, you like work with someone who's a narcissist. I do. I work, well, I'm in radio, so. But this one guy is particularly bad. I mean, re- it's, he's so bad that all the other narcissists are like, whoa, dude, chill out. It, yeah, it, it, nothing he does is wrong. So I used to think it was confidence, but no, it is part of his personality disorder. He cannot see the uh, infallibility of his ways. Now, of course, I have no idea if that's the case with Jared or Bill Cosby, but it's an interesting fact that it is in the industry, in, in all industries, but definitely in the entertainment industry. So, well... I really didn't like Subways anyway. It was all about Jersey Mike's for me. And I'm getting no free sandwiches because I just plugged them. I am getting a free sandwich though because I got a lot of points. They give you a free sandwich after you've eaten a bunch of their sandwiches. I like that deal. I'll take that, Subway. So Subway's going to have to unravel this mess because Jared's been their spokesperson for like 20 years. They, you know, they built the perfect animal and he would do whatever they told him to do. He'd show up on the stupid show Biggest Loser all the time going... Hey guys, you can be thin like me. And have you seen the pictures of Jared lately? Not so thin. I think I'm thinner compared to that guy. And I do not eat Subway sandwiches all day. Uh, I would. Do I want to eat them all day? Yes, they're delicious looking. But I would cake mine in massive amounts of mayonnaise and that's probably not the right thing to do. 
And then he would show up on Biggest Loser and go, Hey guys, I have no personality whatsoever. I'm just an everyday average guy. And hey, you should eat this sandwich because it's low in fat. Look, overall calorie is really low. Thanks, Jared. Oh my. And then the contestants would be just fawning over him. I was taught, you know, they put the camera on the contestant in that room by themselves when they get their little testimony afterwards, which they splice all over the show. Yeah, I met Jared. I was so excited. I found out that he's just like me. I heard all about him back from my small town in uh, some place. Mike Matthews, you couldn't think of a place just then, could you? I couldn't, Shelly. The pressure's overwhelming. Anyways, I'm just intrigued by this whole story. It was at the top of all the like the internet news stories lists. This is the, definitely going to be talked about quite a bit in the uh, world of entertainment that these two big things, one with Jared and one with Bill Cosby and their bizarre uh, extracurricular activities, for lack of a better term. So there's that story, those stories. What do you think about that? And what do you think about narcissists? I just hate how they prey on nice people. Nice people are the ones that get hurt. They love to destroy nice people, and that irritates me more than anything. So what do you think about all that? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to be a sponsor of the show. mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. And you can also comment on the show. At my Twitter, at Mike Talks, and also on my Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. Yes, and now I must be a little bit narcissistic and talk about that the show can also be found at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Ooh, and if you do comment on the show and email the show, we do read your comments on the section emails from email and your comment, not so comments. Ooh, we had one recently. Oh my God. Email for me now at your calm at not so calm mess. I had a comment that was actually a comment to someone else's post on Facebook, but they wrote, Mike Matthews, you were probably my favorite DJ at K Hey back then, meaning back when I was on there from 1994 to 2005. You came out of Mary Chapin Carpenter's Passionate Kisses. That's the one that goes like this. Yeah, he says, you came out of Passionate Kisses one time, mocking her. I can't believe I was mocking Mary Chapin Carpenter, that I was mocking her voice. And this guy says, I'm still rolling 17 years later, still rolling with laughter. I was trying to remember how I actually came out if I was going passionate, like I was trying to sing along with it or something, which now in radio, that's like completely verboten. No DJ is supposed to sing along with the song. That's just wrong. So I guess I can never do that again. Anyway, you can also find out where to listen to the show in iTunes. There at mikesdailypodcast.com. If you rate the show and comment on the show, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. We're also on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, and Ameristream Live. And weekday mornings in Connecticut, I do a morning show. And you can hear that as well. A link to that is at mikesdailypodcast.com, as well as the show that I do weekends on the country station, Country Crossroads Radio. There is also where you can find us on the Instagram, Yelp, Tumblr, all that at mikesdailypodcast.com. And if you want to help support the show and you buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, go through that Amazon link that we have at mikesdailypodcast.com and then bookmark that. Whenever you buy anything on Amazon, go through that bookmark and that helps us out too it's like an affiliate type program type thing plus if you want to donate money through the paypal you can become a mike's daily podcaster and then we send you a special mp3 for thee from all the characters here at cafe anyway there's the blog the daily podcast picture and all my past interviews at mike's daily podcast.com as well it's bison bentley's do you know that Hey, this is Bison Bentley, and Mike Matthews has a couple of stories that'll make you want to ask yourself, Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know that? The United States warned recently 
that China's effort to expand its territory in the South China Sea by building on disputed islands was a threat to regional stability. This according to the Phil AM Star, the newspaper for Filipinos in mainstream America. <clears throat> this is some interesting stuff that you didn't know on the segment. Do you know that? A newly released set of satellite images revealed that China is artificially expanding a reef in disputed waters, presumably to strengthen its territorial claims. Quote, in our view, China's land reclamation and the construction activity are fueling great, greater anxiety within the region, said a State Department spokesman. Military outposing, outposts are feared. Washington is concerned that China might militarize outposts on disputed land features on the South China Sea. So they are watching very carefully about that. Satellite images on the website of the Center for Strategic and International Studies show a flotilla of Chinese vessels dredging sand onto a feature. Basil just shook his, his collar in defiance. And disgust at what China is doing. Uh, they're dredging sand onto a feature known as Mischief Reef. Analysts say the pictures show that China is attempting to create facts in the water. That's what they call it to bolster its territorial claim. Beijing asserts sovereignty over most of the South China Sea, including areas close to the coasts of other states, using a line that first appeared on Chinese maps in the 1940s. The Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan all have overlapping claims. The United States has no claim of its own, but broadly supports, it, supports its Asian allies against Chinese pressure and has asserted that freedom of navigation is in the national interest. The Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson told a news briefing that the reclamation and building work in the Spratly archipelago of the South China Sea was needed partly because of the risk of typhoons in an area with a lot of shipping that is far from land. China occupied Mischief Reef in 1995 Photos showed two structures, including a three-story building sitting on an atoll. China claims 90% of China Sea, of the South China Sea, which encompasses strategic sea lanes through which $5 trillion in shipborne trade passes every year. Well, this might surprise Donald Trump since nothing seems to these days, not even being fired from NBC, but once singled out for exclusion by law from the U.S., Chinese immigrants now make up the largest single group of arrivals every year into this country. The Census Bureau says that China replaced Mexico as the top country of origin for immigrants to the U.S. in 2013, according to usatoday.com. In the past 50 years, the Chinese immigration has undergone a dramatic transformation. The 1965 Immigration Act ended national origin quotas favoring immigration from Europe over other parts of the world. It also established preferences for professional and skilled workers. At the same time, China's subsequent economic modernization and global outlook revived and diversified the flow of immigration from China. In 1960, there were just under 100,000 Chinese-born immigrants in the United States. In 2010, the census reported over 3.3 million adult Chinese Americans. As of that year, Chinese Americans had higher median annual personal earnings than the general U.S. population. According to this article and this writer, there could be more resentment if China's national wealth and strength becomes more pronounced and more explicitly opposed to American interests. This country has often treated immigrants unfairly based on the actions of their countries of origin. In 1999, Chinese American scientist Wen Ho Li was unfairly accused of spying for the People's Republic of China. And I live not too far away from Angel Island, 
which is sort of like the opposite of Ellis Island in New York as far as that Ellis Island was on the Atlantic, Angel Island on, on the Pacific uh, that processed the immigrants that were coming in from other countries and most notably from China. However, all the immigrants that they had that came through Angel Island paled in comparison to the number of immigrants that came through Ellis Island. I saw that recently on an interesting lecture that was done on C-SPAN, one of my favorite channels of all time, China Grove. Outside of Cafe Anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. Recently, when I flew to Florida, by the way, my air finally cleared up. I, I, I haven't mentioned that. I did a bunch of swimming in Florida and it clogged up my ear. Something went was weird. I went to the doctor. She looked in my ear, said there's no wax. I don't see anything in there. It's just going to clear up on its own. I paid all that money to go see a doctor and that's all she had to tell me. And then it cleared up on its own like uh, late last week. So now I can hear her out of my left ear. Yay. I just had to wait two months for that to happen on its own. I wish somebody would have told me that without me having to go through the doctor. Anyway, on that flight to Florida, I was flying over some beautiful parts of our great land. I guess I was over Utah because I think what I saw there was the, um, it's called the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area in Utah. And it's got this really cool sort of river that goes through it. Anyway, you can see that picture there that I took from my airplane window there at mikesdailypodcast.com My Matthew said it's a beautiful picture I wish I could go there it looks like it's like in the middle of the desert and it's beautiful and stuff yes yeah, Shelly Shuhart it is I'm like excited I want to go there now alright go ahead okay bye and she's walking off that was wonderful wasn't that a poignant moment here on the show did you feel sort of like a sense of, of leaving of, of lifting off You know, when you want to do something, you should just go do it. That's what I'm saying. That's what we've learned from today's show. And avoid narcissists at all costs. And if you are a narcissistic, go see a doctor, a therapist, who can get you to be a little more empathetic. That's what it's all about, people. Empathy. Do I care about what you think? Do I care about what's in my sink? That's about the end of the show, basically. So next show, though, I travel to a dog park. That's right, Basil, a dog park where I speak to a dog park person. And we have an interesting conversation and dogs run around and it'll be fun. It'll be podcast history next show. So please tune into that or download to that or just uh, play stream to that. Well, however way you listen to the show, there's a billion ways to listen to the show. So tell your friends about the show. Oh, Basil's here to say goodbye too. He just showed up. He's like, hey, let's go for a walk now since you mentioned that. I'm like, all right. So let's go do that, Basil. And we'll also have next show, Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.